Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, our God. Glory to you. Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and filling all things, Treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell within us, cleanse us of all stain, and save our souls, O gracious one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Master, forgive our transgressions. Holy One, come to us and give our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever. Let us worship our King and God. Let us worship Christ our King and God. Come, let us worship and bow before the only Lord Jesus Christ, the King and our God. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger, O oh my body is sick. Through my sin there is no help in my head. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is a way too heavy to bear. My wounds are loud and strained, the result of my own body. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my brain hurts with fever. All my body is sick. Spent and utterly crushed, I cry aloud in anguish of heart. Lord, you know all my longing. My groans are not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength is spent. The very light has gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper. Those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay snares. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm, plannering treachery all the day long. But I am like the dead who cannot hear, like the dumb unable to speak. I am like a man who hears nothing, in whose mouth is no defense. I count on you, O Lord. It is you, Lord God, who will answer. I pray, do not let them mock me, those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am on the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My wanted enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good, and attack me for seeking what is right. For do not forsake me. My God, do not stay afar off. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my God, my Savior. O Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stay afar off. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my God, my Savior. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
keep silence no longer. Judge the earth, rescue the weak and the poor. Blessed are you, O Lord, your When I call, answer me, O God of justice. The Lord hears whenever I call him. Blessed are you, O Lord, Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You who lead Joseph's flock, shine forth from your cherubim throne. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me. And come down, touch the mountain, wreathe them in smoke. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. In you is the source of life, and in your light we see light. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, God of my own hand. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. My Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? That you may be justified when you give sentence, and be without reproach when you judge. O see, in guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. Indeed, you have truth in the heart, then in the secret of my heart teach me wisdom. O purify me, then I shall be clean. O wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. From my sins turn away your face, and blot out all my guilt. Of your heart grieve for me, O God, put a sinless spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of verse sustain me. That I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. For rescue me, God, my My lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering for me you would give you. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness show favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, burnt offerings wholly consumed. Then you will be offered young bulls on your altar.
great John, forerunner of the Lord, pray to God for us. Holy and great John, forerunner of the Lord, pray to God for us. You banish the dominion of dark and evil ways, and guide towards eternal life. The hearts of those baptized and repentant, O blessed prophet inspired by God, uttering in our restoration. Holy and great John, forerunner of the Lord, pray to God for us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Deliver us from peril, O Mother of Christ our God. You are the one who gave birth to the Creator of all. Now we all cry out to you. Rejoice, O the Intercessor, for our souls. Praise the Lord. 
Lord, your Redeemer. Wisdom. A reading from the letter of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Romans. Let us be attentive. Brothers and sisters, though it depends not upon man's will or exertion, but upon God's mercy, for the Scripture says that there are both high and great for the very purpose of showing my power in you, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth, so that he has served his own individual, and he wants the heart of whoever he fills. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault, or who can resist his will? But who are you, a man, to answer back to God? Will what is told and says to his holder, why have you made me come? Let the fire of life with a plague, who may come and say, what one has to work to me? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. You are holy, you are God, and you dwell in the holy places, giving you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever. Now you will be mute, unable to 
his feet until the day these things take place, because you have not trusted my words. They will all come true in due season. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondering at his delay in the temple. When he finally came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen the vision inside. He kept making signs to them, for he remained speechless. Then when his time of priestly service was over, he went home. Afterward, his wife Elizabeth conceived. She went into seclusion for five months, saying, in these days, the Lord is acting on my behalf. He has seen fit to remove my reproach among men. Glory to you. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. If we haven't already, we're going to hear that more and more. Perhaps through sound systems in restaurants and shopping centers, and hopefully more so in our churches. On this 15th day of November, each year we begin our 40-day journey to the Feast of the Nativity in what is called the Phillips Fast, a penitential season, a season of preparation for our celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday we celebrated the Feast of St. Philip, so that becomes a mark year that it's time to begin this 40-day period, and so we call it Philippovka, or the Philip's Fast. But it is a time to prepare room in our hearts for the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is easy, especially in our society today, to mistake what should be a time of preparation with a time of celebration. Now, we don't want to make a false dichotomy when it comes to our spirit of penitence as Christians. Because for us, repentance, penitence, goes hand in hand with peace and ultimately with joy. This is a means by which we prepare room for the Master in our lives. In the Byzantine tradition, we actually sing Alleluia more in fasting and penitential seasons, including the Great Fast, than we do at other times of year. But we remember Alleluia is praise God. And one of the ways we praise God more heartily, more completely, is through an increase in fasting and prayer and almsgiving. And Yet it is easy to mistake the preparation for the celebration around us in our society. What we see so often, very much for commercial reasons, is as soon as it means more money, more purchases, we're going to start celebrating the nativity. We see this in programming, on television. We see this in what is on shelves, in the stores and in so many ways. And there can be a usefulness to this if ultimately what we're trying to do is prepare room for Christ in our hearts. But we should have some sense, especially as Byzantine Christians, that the celebration comes with the feast. We hold back on aspects of decorating and certain aspects of how we eat and even ways that we pray until the feast arrives. And then when the feast arrives, then we begin our tradition of the post-festive period, and the nativity gives way to the theophany, and we have this wonderful time of celebration in late December and 
in January and even really into February. And so it's important for us to understand as Byzantine Christians the way our liturgical year works and how we want to make proper use of this time of preparation. Because around us, what we'll basically see is celebrating nativity up until the day comes and then it is done. The Christmas trees are being burned and thrown away and the decorations are coming down. But it's very different for us as Byzantine Christians. This is a penitential time, not as intense as, but similar to the great fast. And when the feast arrives, the feast arrives. Now, I must say in parochial ministry, I would, once we get to the feast of St. Nicholas, um, guide the parishioners to some decor, especially in the hall, in the social area where we're going to celebrate St. Nicholas. But we usually held off on any decorations in the church until we were getting close to the actual pre-festive season of the Nativity. And it is interesting to note that liturgically, unlike the Great Fast, there is not a wealth of liturgical prayer and hymnody related to this season. Um, if we look back to when the fast came into existence, and we don't really know when exactly the Eastern churches embraced an Advent penitential season from the West. It's interesting to note that, just as the Feast of the Nativity of our Lord was embraced um, by the East with the modeling of the West, so is the preparatory penitential season embraced from the Western Church, even though in the West today the season of Advent is much much less penitential. But um, at least by the 12th century, and perhaps even as late as the 10th century, this fast was embraced. And it's observed in so many different ways. But we don't have a triodian. We don't have a, a daily guide of prayer and hymnody as we do in the great fast. However, once we get to the pre-feast of the nativity, there is at Compline a triodian. There is a, a three-ode system of hymnody for those days preparing for nativity uh, more immediately. We also find in some traditions, I think we'll hear this when we celebrate the Melkite Divine Liturgy at this time of year, that the Kentuckian of the pre-feast is the standard part of the hymnody before we sing the Trisagion. And we also note in our Menaean that on particular feasts that come up during this time of preparation for the Nativity, there are certain theotokia that are very specific in making mention of the Feast of the Nativity. So it's subtle, but there is some liturgical hymnody that is there in preparation for the feast. Now today's Malebin comes from other Eastern traditions of Christianity and has us, to help us prepare room in our hearts for the Messiah, observing St. John the Baptist and his cry to prepare the way of the Lord and also remembering the initial barrenness of his parents and how in the Philip's fast we recognize a barrenness in our own hearts, in the, the Bethlehem cave, which is our heart, when it comes to the presence of our Lord. And as faithful of the Old Testament awaited the Messiah with prayer and fasting, so do we make a proper dwelling in the cave which is our heart for the Lord through prayer and fasting and indeed almsgiving. This past Sunday, the Catholic Church throughout the world observed the sixth annual World Day of the Poor. And it is indeed at this time of year when we come to Thanksgiving and then the Feast of St. Nicholas that, yes, we properly mitigate the fast for those celebrations, but we're also in our celebration mindful of those who aren't having much of a celebration on those occasions, especially because of poverty. So I'm glad to see that Student Forum has um, established a collection for the time of the Phillips Fast, and we'll find other ways through our prayer and through our actual material outreach to assist those in need 
by perhaps a little bit more of what we gain when we abstain through this particular time. Now, again, there are many variations on the observance of this period, with both liturgical observance in our prayer and in our fasting. There are many, many variations. Um, I have tried for our seminary to give guidance according to the best sources I'm aware of that apply to Byzantine Ruthenian tradition. And we try to observe, as um, we are aware here at the seminary, in our refectory, traditional fasting practices. Although we do perhaps make a few mitigations that might not be observed in monasteries, and that's, particular, that's perfectly fit for our community. But sometimes it becomes a confusion for our seminarians when we fast as to if in the refectory we're following more traditional practices of fasting and abstinence, but my bishop only requires me to do this much, what do I do? I hope to give guidance and simplicity to the answer by saying this. When it comes to our, our main meals of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what we eat in the refectory, foods available in the kitchen, we're going to follow the more traditional fasts. But that doesn't force our community members as individuals to do anything more than what their bishops require. But when you are going to do that, keep the eating down to the student lounge or in your, in your own private space. Let's make a distinction between the foods of the seminary that are in the refectory and then what's in other areas for more casual observance during the fast. I've reminded uh, Mark Grant of this, and hopefully that will strike a proper balance. And most important when it comes to fasting, we keep our eyes on our own. Regardless of what we see happening around us, we don't criticize. We realize that ultimately each of us has a relationship with a spiritual director, and it's in that relationship that we determine what our particular discipline will be. And so in these various ways, we seek to free ourselves, free ourselves from things of this world that we can better live and experience the Spirit of God dwelling in our hearts, dwelling in each of us in that cave, which is Bethlehem, where our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, wants to reside and give us his life. Come, O Jesus, our Savior, redeem and save us.
Holy and great John, forerunner of the Lord, pray to God for us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Here and 
have mercy, Lord, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray for our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Yes. 
have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Master, forgive our transgressions. Holy Lord, come to us and you are our mercies for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. O heavenly gate, open to us the doors of your mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi. Os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi, os podi pomiloi. Father, give our blessing. Blessed is Christ our God, the one who is always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. King of heaven, support our civil authorities, confirm the faith, calm the nations, give peace to the world, and safeguard this city. Grant those who have gone before us a dwelling place among the righteous. Accept us in repentance and confession, for you are good and love us all. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, the only of the more glorious than the seraphim. Lord and Master of my life, 
Bear me from the spirit of indifference, despair, lust for power, and idle chatter. Instead, bestow on me your servant, the spirit of integrity, humility, patience, and love. Yes, O Lord and King, let me see my own sins, and not judge my brothers and sisters. For you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. Let us bend our knees in prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, our Master, our powerful God, who you were born of a Virgin Mary at Bethlehem of Judea, all creation trembled and was enlightened. The world rejoiced in your birth. You have created us in your own image and likeness, giving us baptism through repentance. And you have brought your servants to these holy days for the mastery of passions and the hope of renewal. You have led them to knowledge of your divinity, opening their hearts and spirits, that they might recognize in you the Son of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. O Lord and loving God, receive now your servants as you took the hand of Peter who was sinking into the sea, and as you received him when he wept bitterly after denying you three times. Lord, accept now the tears, the sighs, and the repentance of your servants as you accepted the groaning of the tax collector and the weeping of the sinful woman who washed your feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. Accept them as you accepted the thief who cried out on the cross, Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. And you responded, Today you will be with me in paradise. We have heard what was said about the Magi who worshipped you with their gifts and the shepherds who played their flute to hear the angels' song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. We have heard about how Herod was troubled because God revealed himself in human flesh for the salvation of all. O Lord and loving God, now all creation sings to you. Christ comes down from heaven, go to meet him. Behold, Christ is on earth, and exalt him. Now the assembly of angels exalts in gladness, and the chorus of martyrs dances for joy to see your glorious and holy birth, and all of us, as is proper, glorify you with our hearts and lips. O Lord, in your goodness, welcome your servants who are repenting of their faults, known and unknown, voluntary and involuntary. In your love for us, accept their fasts and prostrations that having kept your commandments, they may come to the day of your holy birth in all purity and without reproach, and receive in communion your pure body and precious blood. For all glory belongs to you and to your Father and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Wisdom, give the blessing. Blessings Christ our God, the one who is always, now and ever and forever. Christ is good and loves us all. Oh. 